The future of education work is changing because these two really big revolutions are clashing right now. Those two coming together is just creating like this perfect opportunity for people to change the trajectory of their life. The ticket to play the game is free. It's free. There's no limit to how high it can go. The consequences yeah. of failure is zero. The future of education is changing. Education opens the door for opportunities for work. What it looks like to be a student now is going to be way different in yeah. the future. I want people who are listening to feel like there's a huge opportunity mm -hmm. that you could potentially change your life. You can change the whole trajectory of your life mm -hmm. if you're just aware of this. I think a student is that's, anybody looking to acquire information. Right? That's the other thing is that right now, people usually think of a student as someone in their mm. academic years. Yeah. But I'm very sure that in the future, the best, most successful people treat their entire lifetime as a student. Right. They're constantly learning. We're always a student. Yeah, always a student exactly. of life. The opportunity lies in someone creating content or education products, becoming an educational creator, or what we like to call an innovator, mm -hmm. someone who synthesizes ideas together and then repackages it to share that knowledge. For the masses of people, the landscape of education has shifted completely. The average person, I would say globally, not even just in the US, the average person, if you wanted to learn something, if you wanted to look something up, mm -hmm. what's the first thing you do? Uh, I was going to say Google, but <laughs> I mean, yeah. use AI. <laughs> sure, chat GPT now. It's yeah. GPT it, you Google it, you mm -hmm. TikTok it. I know Gen Z TikTok stuff. Oh, yeah, TikTok. You YouTube it. Mm -hmm. You don't go to like harvard.edu to learn something. Yeah, yeah the, you don't ask your teacher. Right, education now is just the internet. Before it was like you had to be a student at university to learn something. Like you have to go to Harvard, but now like anybody in the world can learn the Harvard or equivalent higher education just by Googling something or yeah. YouTubing something. Yeah, exactly. I was also watching like Harvard business classes and Harvard workshops on YouTube. So yeah, like all that information <laughs> is just, <laughs> it's just available now. Mm -hmm. And the issue now is not that the information isn't there. The issue is there's so much of it mm -hmm. and it needs structure and it needs someone with authority and someone trustworthy to pave the way for it. I think the word that you might be looking for is like context. Yes. It needs relevance. Good. You can look up anything you want on chat GPT. Right. But A, is it correct? First of all. <laughs> yeah. And then B, um, who built chat GPT and what agendas do they have behind it? Uh -huh. So yeah, you still need like a human touch to mm -hmm. who has firsthand experience of what you're trying to learn, mm -hmm. teach it to you. Right. And as there's more AI, it's just more important to have more human teachers. Mm -hmm. um, AI will teach you facts. Humans right. will teach you results and guide you towards outcomes and stuff. Yeah, I guess all this is to say is like, yeah, the future of education work is changing because these two really big revolutions are kind of like clashing right now. Mm -hmm. And that is the creator economy, making it super accessible for the common person Mm -hmm. to monetize anything they want. And then um, AI. And the very fact that AI is also accessible to the common person. Mm -hmm. So those two coming together is just creating like this perfect opportunity mm -hmm. for people to change the trajectory of their life. So let's quickly like touch back on why this excites us, first of all, mm -hmm. and why this is even an opportunity. Because if you rewind a few years ago, we weren't in the creator economy a few years ago. Maybe you might know this, but like when's, when was the official start date of the creator economy? But I would dare to say that, I mean, YouTube started in like the mid 2000s. Mm -hmm. So the creator economy can't be older than a teenager pretty much. When did the creator economy start? History in 1997. Oh, wow. Okay. Stanford University's Paul Saffo. Okay. So that was when like they talked about the term creator economy, but it says here like it was mostly about animations and illustrations. Okay. So I so would dare say that what we're talking about the creator economy right now is it's evolved well, a lot. It has evolved, yeah. I think one of the reasons why we even started Cajun Koi was because you were looking for a better way to teach people. You were literally trying to teach your patients in the hospital. You're like, dang, I keep repeating myself over and over and over. Oh, yeah. And it's frustrating, one, when you have to keep doing that. But two, they don't even remember it. Mm -hmm. What if you just created with context that like you're talking about yeah. videos to educate? And so that's yeah. kind of like why we even started it. And then it obviously evolved for us into teaching what we know. We all are unique people. We all have our unique experiences. We've all solved unique problems to ourselves. And what the creator economy is allowing is for people to help solve those problems at scale and find 
their guides mm -hmm. in life. And so if you're in a position right now where you're working a job and you don't like what the future looks like for you, maybe you don't have the freedom you want. Maybe you feel like you work like a dog. You work like a nine to five. Mm -hmm. You don't have uh, location freedom. You don't get to see your family enough. Mm -hmm. Or you're just doing work that you genuinely don't like. There's an opportunity now to change all of those aspects mm -hmm. and do something that you do like on your own terms and helping the people that you actually care about. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I like that you um, brought up that we started YouTube as an educational thing. Yeah. I remember when I was trying to teach my patients about like certain diseases and mm -hmm. I would give them like, like these glaucoma. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like blood pressure. Yeah. Um, I would give them these printouts mm -hmm. and they wouldn't read that stuff. Yeah. It's like, I that don't was know. a, that was a quota in medical school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You have to give it. You have to patient give them, education. You have to give them patient education. Yeah, it's just, to, it's just a pamphlet usually. Or there's no guarantee that they'll read it. Yeah. You don't have to know. Yeah, <laughs> just give it to them. Yeah. So like they would not really understand a lot of the things about their health. And so like then I give you a pamphlet last week. Yeah. It's like yeah, I didn't read that. And they're like okay, yeah, like mm -hmm. why? Um, because I'm telling them already. Yeah. So if I made you a video, would you watch it? So yeah, because it's you. Because you're my doctor. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know where you got this. Like yeah. you probably just printed it out on up to date or whatever, print on Google or whatever yeah. it is. Chat right? GBT, you know. Chat GBT <laughs> it. Like that yeah. Chat GBT doesn't know my health, but you do. You're my doctor. So that's when the, the light bulb hit. It's like, oh, so they'll listen to me because I know them because that is the human connection. Right. And we spend time together. Mm -hmm. And you know, being a doctor is like being someone's teacher mm -hmm. of their health in yeah. a way. When that happened, I realized education is the way to like this new life. Mm -hmm. Now that AI has come about, mm -hmm. that is just like 10x that's like 100 times true now yeah any person can make infinite ai content like from their bedroom mm -hmm. but is that content good is that content relevant is it like yeah is there the correct context sure like now more than ever it's important to have someone who is a human behind the education i think you bring up a good point i used to think that you know people who made content or just having fun mm -hmm. it was all a passion project or they're just making vlogs or dumb videos and stuff oh yeah it never really occurred to me until we started doing it, that not only could you educate and change lives, but you could actually make money doing it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's like really when it clicked to me. It's like, mm -hmm. oh crap, like not only can I make a video mm -hmm. and teach someone, but I can get paid for doing it. Yeah. And they don't have to pay to watch it. Like that was the craziest unlock I think I had. LinkedIn reported in 2023 that um, they said that the creator economy is massive three times more than they expected uh -huh. but the interesting thing is they said that they found that 44 percent of create of content creators are full-time mm -hmm. and 32 percent are part-time and then 24 percent are doing as a hobby yeah so what that tells me is that 44 percent 32 percent that's like 70. 75 percent right 76 percent yeah, yeah. <laughs> 76 percent of people are making money yeah teaching or being content creators right? being content creators that's a that's the vast majority of people making money yeah. from the creator economy. More so it's than not half. like yeah, more than half. Yeah. It's so like my perception of a creator was like, oh, only, you know, Mr. Beast and Yeah. And people at his caliber are making right. money. The challenge that's not, people are that's not true. Right. Yeah. And you're right too. Like back then the creators in my eyes were just like all these comedians or prank channels, yeah, gamer like channels, bloopers, gamers, yeah. which there's still a lot of. And they also do make money. <laughs> and they make massive amounts of money. Right. Some gamers have like more followers than like yeah. big like celebrities and political figures. But like I thought that you had to be like humongous to be making money. Uh -huh. But obviously, you know, That's a lot of people true. are making money. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. I'm sure that number is variable. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of smaller creators, like even with like tens of thousands of followers who make a lot more money yeah. than those who are really, really big. Yeah. It all depends on the context and the value of the content that they make. Yeah. Obviously, we take it with a grain of salt. 44% are saying that they're full time. To say that you're full time has to have a certain amount of confidence yeah. to report that, you know? Either that's the only thing you're doing or that's your main source <laughs> of income. Yeah. <laughs> right. So... so yeah. But I thought it wasn't going to be 44%. I thought it was going to be like 5% or something. Right. Something small. Personally, why I wanted to go to college mm -hmm. and why I wanted to become a doctor was, oh, was yeah. because there was some kind of stability. The feeling that the guarantee of a life, a stable life. Yeah. That is the whole reason why I did it. In the near future, it might get to the point where like being your own 
self-reliant person, like making money on your own without having to rely on like an employer or another company to dictate your life, there might be a roadmap that is at just as stable. If you're a person who has like a innovator mindset, first of all, and if you have like a certain level of bravery, then I think you can do it. I think you can bet on yourself mm -hmm. and there is a certain level of security that you can have taking that path. I think what it comes down to is the first step that it takes to try this path is so easy to take and the risk is so low that everyone should try it. Whereas the other way you're talking about, like if you wanna go to a grad school or something, you can't just say like, oh, I'm gonna try it for like a week and then I'm not gonna do it. Like you have to commit a lot of money. You have to take some loans. You may have to <laughs> take some loans out. You might have to fly to another state or uh -huh. something to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. Where now it's like the creator economy, it's like if you wanna if you want to try this and teach something online, you can just make some videos in your bed. Everyone has a phone nowadays. Mm -hmm. I like to think about life as a video game, but like mm -hmm. the ticket to play the game is free. It's free. There's no limit to how high it can go. The it's, consequences yeah. of failure is zero. <laughs> it's pretty, it's, it's, <laughs> it's next to nothing. Zero. Unless, okay, well, unless you are someone who is full-time. Unless you're like quitting your job. <laughs> right. And actually, this is a good point too. I don't think that everyone should quit their job to do this. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that number that you pulled up earlier is pretty important. Like full time. Yeah. There's like, there's like 30, what, 30% 30 of people who are doing it. Yeah. 37%. Let's say 50% because 20% was using it as a hobby and they sure. might be, they might become that part-timer. Sure. But at least half the people who are creating content mm -hmm. are doing it on a part-time basis. And we started doing a part-time, like we didn't commit fully into right, teaching right. first. Like this was like a passion project on the side. I was doing this during medical school. You were doing this during residency. Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't just fully commit. So like the risk was, it's the risk is just that much lower. Mm -hmm. Like if we stopped, we stopped. No big deal. Yeah. We could have just kept going. Yeah. I honestly, I'm still kind of a, a risk adverse person. Yeah. If I'm going to be yeah com completely honest, like I would only have taken this path if I had seen the proof. Mm -hmm. I've seen the success stories. Yeah. And I actually believed that it was possible. Yes. Would I have taken this path? For sure. Um, because that's the whole reason I took medicine is like, oh, this has been tried and true and done so many times. And the success stories are just so obvious. So yeah, we are two people of science and we see the evidence. And so we, and we believe in ourselves, yeah. then you should go for it. I think the thing that people don't realize is it doesn't happen overnight. These things don't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And neither again does school. Those like what, two to four year programs. Some of them are longer. It took us like 10 years to become doctors. Yeah, I was going to say. It's like it took us 10 years, a not, decade. Not two years. Yeah. And so if you can commit yourself to a craft, then the payouts are far greater than it would have been otherwise. Mm -hmm. And there's no risk to getting started. To recap all of it, like education is moving online. So people are going online to find information. They want to find information. People want to connect with people mm -hmm. because that whole doctor thing said, like they understand, you know, the context, you know who they are. They want to learn from you. They don't want to learn from ChatGPT. That's not as fun. Mm -hmm. But knowing that AI is also very useful. You need to strike a balance. Yeah. You're actually, so we're, we're doing this book club uh -huh. with our team um, and we're reading Dune. Because mm -hmm. after, after watching Dune 2, we just had to start reading it because it's so good. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one quote that we talked about during the last club. Those people were beaten and enslaved by the people who actually mm. used ai dang so it was like well first of all like for a book written in 1950 yeah i mean that's pretty like, that's have that the, foresight there's foresight there <laughs> oh i find it here once men turned their thinking away from machines it only permitted other men with machines to enslave them yeah so like that's by, by scary Reverend Mother, that is super scary but also true you already see it nowadays uh -huh. like if you don't learn to live with ai it's going to control you yeah. Like us, we're using AI to improve our productivity. Yeah. We're using AI to improve our performance. A person who is being owned by AI mm -hmm. is the person who is constantly on their phone. Yeah. The AI algorithms are just controlling their mind, controlling right. their feeds, controlling their behaviors. Mm -hmm. Like that is what you don't want to be. Yeah. So yeah, it's already happening now. Right. So yeah, we've got to be ahead of the curve. If you're not aware that you can leverage AI, if you're not aware that you can make money as an educational creator then you will in turn be controlled by it. What is the, what is the other uh, dune thing? You will not have drink, drink in the water of life. You need to see what yes. is possible. <laughs> we have a lot of dune references on this podcast. <laughs> you need to see as far as you can see. Being aware of the context, being aware of what other people suffer, struggle with, the problems mm -hmm. they have. But um, returning to the AI thing that we're talking about, yes, AI is also a huge part of why this opportunity is so hot and ready to be like jumped on right now. 
because mm -hmm. there are tools popping up left and right. I think ChatGPT really changed things. Like just the fact that there is something that powerful now that you can use. The way I like to think about it is like before when you got really good at something, you had to spend basically like your whole life getting there. Like if you want to be a doctor, you got to spend like 15 years to become good at doctor. Mm -hmm. But then you're only good at being a doctor. Mm -hmm. But now it's like you can just use AI or ChatGPT to get like 70% good enough at another skill in like five minutes. Like I don't need to hire a coder anymore to like design my landing page. I can just get AI to do it in like five minutes. Yeah. So all of those skills that like you needed that might get you somewhere good enough, you can just replace with AI mm -hmm. instantly. Yeah, and you should you should still be like known for like one or two things mm -hmm. that, you know, like that you are firsthand experience good at, mm -hmm. but you can use AI to like get to the 80-20 of all the other things. Yeah. So that you can have a better um, perspective. perspective. Yeah. Be like a three-dimensional person. And AI tools are only going to get better and they're leveling the playing field for even... I think one of the coolest things is for older people, you know, all those people mm -hmm. who are older and like don't know how to use technology, like our mom's. I mean, honestly, <laughs> mom is teaching me some things about, like, <laughs> but about it's just like, like using the phone sometimes. The fact that an older person now doesn't need to like try to figure out software because AI tools can just do it for them. Mm -hmm. That's a huge upgrade too, because the people who are older are the ones with all that experience and expertise. Right. Yeah, that's true. And if they're able to now become a creator, it changes the game. Yeah. I would love to see mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love to see like 60 year olds who are Our aunts, distilling uncles. and sharing knowledge yeah. about these things because they have it. They just don't know how to distribute it. And that is what this opportunity can do. I agree with you. A creator is not a teenager sport. Yeah. It is not a young person's sport. It is everybody's sport now. Yeah. Um, and if anything, the older people have the advantage in the sport. Yes. Because they have the context, knowledge, wisdom, knowledge. expertise. Right. Those people have the advantage. So I'm pretty excited to see, yeah, the, the rise of older creators <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to think of some older creators that i watch and uh, i guess none come to mind right now like my age <laughs> you mean old as in age or old as in how long they've been on youtube oh that's true the ones that are i was talking about like how how long they've been on youtube oh, oh okay gotcha like the old youtube people the og youtubers mm -hmm. they're like my age yeah there's that's like true. mkbhd there's like zach king there's like smosh Matt <laughs> or, i guess i guess they're a little older how big is but yeah like, like those Red guys Link, are like older too yeah so they're like, kind of like around our age, but there's no like boomers that I can name. Yeah, I think the the push with AI now and, and education being a, like a forefront of why people create, mm -hmm. I think it will change. I remember now I was watching Peter McKinnon and he got his dad to become a creator. Oh, I nice. thought that was really cool <laughs> and wholesome. I don't think our dad would do it. <laughs> he, do that with, he like built his dad like a whole like wood shop or something. I forget. Yeah. But it was cool. Yeah, our dad would crush it though. He has so much knowledge. He has so he has too, too much knowledge in there. <laughs> yeah. That needs to be extracted. Yeah. It does. <laughs> too that's, many inventions. That's what I'm saying. That's this, about. this is this is the opportunity. And um You didn't need to monetize it, but he could. You could. But um you just you can let us monetize you it. need an outlet for it. <laughs> yeah. The current traditional education system was built for a traditional path. Yeah. And there's a new path. And that system that is, was built like Hundreds of years ago. Right. <laughs> I mean, that path, that old path still exists if you want to do it. Yeah. But what we're trying to say is there's a new path and there's a lot to innovate on and pioneer. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of opportunity for people with knowledge to come in and help carve that new path. Yeah. So if you are That's a person true. who considers yourself an innovator. Yeah. A knowledge you worker. you like thinking outside the box. You love knowledge. Uh -huh. You love being a lifelong learner. All these things that if that is you. Mm -hmm. then this is a huge opportunity, I think. What are some of the benefits you think of taking this path though? What does the opportunity provide? One to of me, one things. of the biggest things is just being, the word is autonomy, mm -hmm. is like getting to do whatever you want when you want. I don't know how to better describe it. It's autonomy. Well, you it's, have time freedom, uh -huh. you have location free, you can be wherever you want because everything is remote. Yeah. You're not tied to a, a hospital like we were. I guess the big thing that people who would object to this would be um, the financial freedom. But as we see, people are making money. And I think it comes down to your definition just, too. It's like, we're not saying that everyone who does this is going to be like a millionaire. No. But most people aren't millionaires anyway. It's like, mm -hmm. that's not the goal. No. I like to put it in terms of a definition almost. So okay. I think this path does lead, and this is not a political definition at all, but okay. a path leads to freedom. Freedom, yeah. That's, that's, just another, the, the, that's the word, freedom. It's another dune thing. Oh, no, he says to paradise. <laughs> they say to paradise. <laughs> oh, is that what they say? 
<laughs> oh yeah, to paradise. Paradise. Leads to paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but I think um, this is a road to quote unquote freedom and not a political sense of freedom where mm -hmm. like you're entitled to it or whatever. It's part of the constitution. I like to define freedom as the five P's. So for me, I think freedom is for myself being able to work on a project that I want to um, in a place that I like. Project is doing whatever I want mm -hmm. in a place wherever I want to mm -hmm. um, with the people that I want to. So mm -hmm. autonomy to choose who you work with at a pace that I like. So mm -hmm. no pressure from above. I can take a few days off if I want for bur for burnout for purposes, for creativity purposes, for mm -hmm. all those things. If you stop working, you'll know that you're not going to suddenly go out of business or right. anything like that. My last P is to earn a profit. I was going to say, like, not leave money, money out of there it somewhere. Because <laughs> profit, you do have to make a profit right. to be able to support yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you can hit those five Ps, I think you have achieved what in my definition of freedom is. Very thankfully, I think that we've been able to do that. And I was super, super lucky that I was able to do that before I hit 30. And a lot of people just spend their whole life trying to get there. I'm not saying that your definition of each of those five Ps might be different. Like my profit goal was not like millions and millions of dollars, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But to be able to comfortably do those things and not have the stress, the anxiety, the fear that, oh God, tomorrow, like if I don't show up, then it's not going to work. That's the pace things. Like I'm having, fired. <laughs> yeah, having, having that under your belt is so freeing. Mm -hmm. That's why it's freedom. <laughs> yeah. So that is the path to freedom that I see right there. And to get started on that path, I like to put imagery or a visual association to what that is. Mm -hmm. And we're coining that as the path to freedom is through the innovator. So an innovator yes. is a pretty heavy... It's a loaded word. There's a lot of connotations to it, mm -hmm. but let's break it down into what we believe a real, a real innovator is. Well, I recently read... Um... Another Cal Newport book. <laughs> Cal Newport is just like one of my favorite authors. Yeah. Um, shout out to him. But I read So Good They Can't Ignore You, which is like, it's been around for a while. Yeah. And he talks about something called like the adjacent possible mm. in it, where if you want to be really good, that's like the zone of where you want to work. Mm. And adjacent possible is just another word for the cutting edge. Okay. Um, yeah. Or like the area where you pioneer, the area where you experiment. Yeah. Like, that's where the forward thinkers are. That's where the thought leaders are. And so I think that innovation has to do with working in that zone. And he talks about making small bets. Hmm. So you play in that playground and you do small tests to see what works and what doesn't. Yeah. And then that's how you can carve your path. So it sounds like very so, scientific. I mean, he provides a pretty convincing roadmap on how to get good at something yeah. in this new economy, uh -huh. which I really appreciated from that book. Sweet. I like that, being on the cutting edge. Exactly. Thinking outside the box mm -hmm. and taking all this knowledge that exists and putting it together, synthesizing it, and coming up with new ways to solve people's pain and problems. But in addition to like, in, like innovation itself as a word, like if we, I think people think of like making stuff, creating things, which is 100% true. But I think a part of innovation that I also want to throw into the mix about why the modern innovator is going to succeed in this new path in the creator economy is because I like to think of him also as like a modern teacher. Mm -hmm. So if you think of like what the teachers we had growing up in like elementary school or high school, those teachers are basically just like glorified babysitters. In high school, like you have to be in class from seven to three, like they don't have a choice. They have to, they have to be there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise the kids are going to run off and be delinquent. Mm -hmm. But those teachers have to teach like by a standardized test with rules and regulations. They have to teach things like history and U.S. history or whatever in the U.S. at least. So it's like they're not really teaching any useful skills to the students. They're just teaching what they were told to teach. Right. Mm -hmm. And education, as we know it, knowledge itself by, by itself doesn't really get you anywhere. You need the implementation. You need to understand the implementation with it. And I think that's where an innovator also shines is not only are they on the cutting edge, but they're able to help someone else get to the cutting edge. They have to help someone change. Right. They have, they to, have to help to someone. Outcomes. They have to help someone, yeah, get an outcome or get somewhere. So it's more about just like, here's a whole bunch of knowledge. It's like, no, here's knowledge and I'm going to hold your hand and get you there. Because that's really the end of the way. That's how you can, if we're talking about the profit part, how you can charge money for something is you have to be able to deliver on some kind of value. You promise and that's what an innovator can do yeah right they can solve problem and they can get you to, to that problem as well as being on the cutting edge i think that's something we can talk about in the next episode for sure i'd love to dive deep into innovator yeah and now that we're talking about it, i think because you're reading dune i think there's gonna be a lot of duning all over the place <laughs> we should probably read other things too along the way <laughs> been really getting to racing lately but you know that's another thing mm -hmm. because okay i'll just share a little bit about it we both went to what was it vegas uh fru's birthday is vegas Fru. yeah our, our sister's birthday yeah in Vegas, mm -hmm. and we, I guess, discovered yeah. Formula One 
which yeah. has been around for decades. Formula One is just the definition of innovation at like the peak level. Like there's just so much technology and so much money being poured in mm -hmm. to innovating on such like a confined set of rules, mm -hmm. like a car yeah. driving on like a track, that is the rule. Mm -hmm. But they're innovating so like, they're making so many micro decisions on like a tournament level. Yeah, It's like, dang, these guys are, that is what it means to be an innovator. Yeah. Like you just- That's true creativity, yeah. Exactly. It's just doing it together with a team mm -hmm. And you have like a driver who is like getting into like human performance and like pushing what it means to like, there's just, there's just so much about racing that I've been getting into mm -hmm. related to this innovator mindset Yeah, that uh, I think we should talk about later on. I guess if you want to get started in this opportunity right now, think about what knowledge you have, what uh -huh. wisdom, what expertise, yeah, life experiences, what yeah. problems have you solved? I think that's probably the best lens to put it. What problem have you solved for yourself? What does that even mean? Like, it could be any common terms. It could be anything. If someone asks you like, what are you proud that you accomplished? Yeah. Like you got into medical school, you solved that problem. Yeah. Now can you teach other people to do it? You uh, learn how to play the get, guitar. Yeah. You learn how to make you a learn, song. You learn how to produce on Ableton. Yeah. You learn how to do That's handstand. That's a problem that you fixed. <laughs> yeah. You learn handstand. You learn how to you can literally you teach how to other people how to do a handstand. <laughs> you know what's funny is like... You learn how to speed run Zelda. <laughs> exactly. People want to do that. Okay. I've been playing yeah. I've been playing the Sifu game. What's that? I've been playing this game called Sifu. Sifu? Yeah. It's, uh, it's like two years old. It's like pretty oh, old okay. game. And there's so many channels teaching you how to speed run oh. Sifu. <laughs> there's literally a course that teaches you how to do a handstand that I've seen. Yeah. And it's sure. like a like a seven day course or something uh -huh. where you just like first day you gotta strengthen this muscle and then second yeah. day you do this. Like if you solve a problem and you break it down and you know how to teach it, think about what you can teach and get ready to teach people yeah. online at scale. For sure. And change people's lives. Well, start slow. I would say um, yeah. there are things you can... That is the vision. Yeah. Right? But yeah, first of all, identify some problems that you can solve for yourself. And then think about how you might you might explain that in simple terms to somebody. And then go ahead and start, if you can, start creating some content about it. I don't necessarily think that people should immediately jump into long form podcasting like we're doing right now. Yeah, I mean... It's a very scary hurdle to, to cross over. And maybe we don't have to get there in this episode. We will eventually. But just start... Uh, Figuring out how you can get your ideas out of your head onto paper or onto a note-taking app mm -hmm. like Notion or Tana or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then just start reading, consuming more adjacent areas and figuring out, do you actually understand how to solve that problem from multiple perspectives? Yeah. It's a good place to start. All the audience who have been following us and participating in our study quest, yeah. take out a piece of paper and Feynman technique, <laughs> exactly how- 5S teach this. 5S teach yeah. exactly how you achieve that. Yeah. And that's all it takes right now. That's the first thing you can do.